Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Supergirl Season 5. Today we're going to be talking about some more stuff from this article, and I mentioned it in the other video the other day. I'm not sure when this video is going up, because I'm currently in LA, in San Diego, possibly in the next few days, when I'm going to Comic Con. So I'll be there right now when this video is up, it's going to be scheduled, and if you are at Comic Con, Please be sure to say hi, or if you see me in LA or San Diego just outside the event, please be sure to come up to me, say hi, and yeah, so anyway, let's talk about this, we're going to be talking about this Supergo article, the showrunners have answered some questions, we're going to talk about it right here. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so first things first. We got some breaking news coming from Entertainment Weekly, and this is massive news. So they've confirmed that Melissa Benoist is making her directorial debut in season five, more specifically in episode seventeen of season five. So this is super exciting. Melissa stepping behind the camera. We've seen David Harewood do it. We've seen on the other shows. Tom Cavanaugh's done it multiple times. And you have Danielle Panabaker who did her Godspeed episode last season. So a lot of the actors really kind of like to do this, to step into it. So it's about time that Melissa finally gets her go at directing. And this is very exciting to me. And some people on Twitter have been asking me, how the hell can a main star, you know, direct their own show? You know, they're in the show. So a lot of people who aren't into films and, you know, maybe haven't directed themselves, sort of get the misconception that a director controls the camera but the director basically calls all the shots it's their vision on TV it's a little bit different but it's practically the same I'm going to just quickly explain it in terms of what they do in films so the director is in control of the vision he's sort of the head leading man or woman and they are controlling everything so everyone so including the director of photography who controls the camera the stars you know, the lighting guys, the script writers, everything, they all go to the director. So that's what Melissa's going to be doing in this episode of Supergirl. So she's just going to be calling the shots and it's not going to be that hard because she's the main star, she's the director. What she would do as the main star is go to the director and be like, what do you want me to do for this? But instead, she just goes to herself. She knows she has the vision of this episode so it's going to be perfectly good in my opinion and it should run really smoothly so episode 17 this is going to be in the back half of the season I believe David Harewood's was about this time last year so roughly the same I think they like to give them like after the mid season so you can have one episode that isn't like too crazy like you know the mid season finale which has to be done perfectly or something like that so it's just to give them a chance and then you know in the case of Tom Kavanagh once you've proven yourself multiple times then you go on to direct a massive episode like the 100th episode so I think if Melissa wants to continue doing this she can move up and continue on to do a massive episode sometime in the near future and I think it's really good for the stars especially of these shows is because directors on TV you have to get it they are very different from directors on film most of them are just for hire and you know, if it's a star who's directing the episode, they have more control actually than a director who has just been hired, who say is flying up to Vancouver, going to direct this one episode, because the showrunners have a lot of control and the people that write the scripts, the, the writer's room, have a lot of control, even more control than the director. So in this case, I think it's a really good opportunity for Melissa to take control and bring along her own vision. Okay, so let's move on to talk about the next thing. So let's talk about this article. I'm going to do about half of these in this video. And I'll do a few more in a video in the next few days. Because, you know, there's not too much information to go over. But these are quite chunky. And I don't want to just cram it all into one video. Okay, so the first question is... And I'm not actually sure where this is coming from. But it is quoted as burning questions okay so the first one at the top of the article is will DEO director Alex Danvers played by Kyla Lee and Kelly Olsen played by Azzy Tesfaye Catco CEO James Olsen's sister be getting cozier 
So we'll talk about the answer in a sec, but that is a really badly worded question. Just going to say. All right, so the answer is yep. They ended the season with a kiss and a deep friendship, Quella says, adding that it's time for Alex's personal life to take off. Okay, so they're teasing that this relationship's going to continue and go forward into the next season, saying that Alex's personal life is finally going to take off and it's finally happening. To be honest, if you guys want my straight answer, I believe that you know, we shouldn't really trust what they say because every single freaking season, the showrunners, this being Jessica Queller and Robert Rovner specifically, they promise a lot of stuff and that stuff normally doesn't come true a lot of the time. And I don't know, they've said that Alex is going to sort of take off in her own personal life a long time ago. And, you know, since season three, she's been trying and struggling to actually be able to adopt a child and it finally nearly happened this season but then they held back on that and now it's supposed to happen and you're thinking that I'm supposed to fully trust you that it's going to happen. I have severe doubts about that but I would love it to happen. I think there is a real connection between Alex and Kelly and I'm looking forward to that. Looking forward to seeing what they do with the adoption storyline if they go through with it because you know it's taken nearly two to three seasons so wow yeah so leave your comments below okay so let's move on to talk about this next thing so the next question is is eve gone on the contrary is the answer though miss test marker lex's shady second was last seen fleeing national city we are doubling down on our investment in eve says rovner noting that she is being set up to play a big role Okay, so this is very exciting because, you know, we all know how the season actually ended and I think we'll talk about Leviathan in a sec because they've answered a bit to do with what's happening there. But Eve ended up and we got the end scene, the cliffhanger with Leviathan. So that is a lot to be excited about because she's involved with this Leviathan storyline, whatever it's going to be. We'll talk about that in a sec once again. But... The idea that they are making her a bigger character than she was last season because she was a massive character last season. Don't put that out of the books because she really was. Especially, you know, when Lex came in by the end of the season. She was massive. So, yeah, Eve's not going anywhere. And although she's not working for Lex because Lex is dead, they are doubling down on their investment in Eve and they're setting up her to play a massive role. So that's very, very exciting. Personally, I'm super ready for that. Okay, so let's move on to the next question. What is Leviathan? Okay, so this is the answer. While Eve was trying to skip town, a strange woman warned her Leviathan is coming. In the DC Comics, Leviathan is the name of a crime syndicate that has ties to the League of Assassins, run by Talia al Ghul, and then quotations, but we are doing our own interpretation Rovner hints. Okay, so this is very exciting. We got the confirmation that Leviathan is in fact an adaptation of what they are in the comics. So an organization, a crime syndicate with ties to the League of Assassins, Talia al Ghul, who we've got on Arrow, and you know, she exists in the Arrowverse, but they're doing their own twists. That's what the showrunner teases. So I imagine it's probably not going to be the League of Assassins. It's going to be something completely different. This organization is going to be run by one singular person. Obviously, Talia al Ghul ran it in the comics. It's not going to be Talia al Ghul unless we do another version of her. Yeah, it simply isn't. It's going to be someone completely different, but Eve is going to be all sort of linked up with all of this. So that is exciting. I can't wait for this, but we talked about Malafaic in the last video, and that should be going up you know, a few days from when this video actually goes up. So go check that out if you haven't already. But what was teased for him is that he's going to be a massive villain for Jean to face up till Crisis to set up Jean to face Crisis. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. That has been it. So thank you so much. And if you see me at Comic Con, I want to say a massive thank you to all of you who have supported me. But also, please be sure to say hi if you do see me. So I'll see you guys later, goodbye.